Anything for the post office? Yeah. Miss Babcock's corporate tax returns must be postmarked by the 15th or she'll face substantial penalties. Today's the 16th, Niles. What's your point? <laughs> Would you mail this letter to Lenny? No, I can't believe you're still writing to your first grade pen pal. Why? Val wrote to us for a long time until eventually he lost his appeal. Well, she got tired of writing him, huh? No, he lost his appeal. <laughs> they fried him at Leavenworth. There you go. Miss Fine, this is an Easter seal. Oh, they don't look. <laughs> Ugh, something smells rotten in here. Or dead under the house. Or, Maki, I love your new perfume. She's trying to attract a guy. Oh, who, the orkin man? All right, mm, be nice to your sister. <laughs> Thank God my new girlfriend doesn't smell like that. Oh, does she fall down and thumbtack to the wall like the last one? <laughs> well, I think it's just fabulous. Now, even you'll be married before me. Who is this little tramp that's after your father's money? Well, her name's Veronica. I leave notes for her in third period. She leaves them for me in fourth. We've had no physical contact whatsoever. Well, it's working for Michael and Lisa Murray. <laughs> Oh, did you have a nice evening? Oh, I'll tell you, it was a beautiful wedding. Val and I cried our eyes out. Mm. She made some gorgeous bride, that Dr. Quinn. <laughs> Where was our TV guide? Right here. Give me your best shot. All righty, channel 29, What Follows the Ghost and Mrs. Muir? That would be Family Affair, the episode where Mr. French accidentally drops Mrs. Beasley off the terrace, followed by the Munsters with Marilyn number two, followed by Bewitched with Darren number one, but Mrs. Kravitz number two. Bravo, Miss Fine. You seem to know more about 60s television than most people your age have forgotten. Well, are you calling me old or just stupid? <laughs> well, you have a childlike quality that I find absolutely charming. Child blank? Just stupid. <laughs> well, what does he expect? All I do is talk to kids all day. You know, if someone would keep their head out of the paper in the morning, maybe I can have an adult conversation. Ooh, look, Dumb and Dumb is playing at the Dollar Theatres. <laughs> all right, Miss Fine, you want an adult conversation? Yes, I do. Let's talk. Um, affirmative action, for or against? Against. Get rid of affirmative action. Those creams don't work. <laughs> My mother has been smearing them on her thighs for years, and she still looks like she fell asleep in a wicker chair. <laughs> Concede, Brighton. I've got you in two moves. You're done. Finished. Toast. Ha! <laughs> Sir, when it's time to choose who pulls the plug on the life support, go with the girls. Ma, Jules is gonna be here in two minutes. Would you stop butting with my skirt? Can you believe her? Stop it. It's fine. She's a mother. She's just pulling it down. She's my mother. She's hiking it up. <laughs> oh, I get it. Preparing the virgin for the big sacrifice, huh? Yeah, if it was 1980. Ma! <laughs> Meanwhile, show some uh, decolletessen. Stop it, Ma. <laughs> I'm not some over-the-hill, hussy, desperate to... Uh... Oh, how's this? <laughs> now, aren't you glad I forced you to go to the Hadassah hoedown? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She thought that you could meet the man of her dreams hanging around gay bars. <laughs> Ma, I said, Zay bars. <laughs> I'm getting you a miracle here. <laughs> Hurry up, Miss Vine. You're not getting any younger. <laughs> I'm not the one that looks like Lily Munster. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I just met the man a week ago. It takes a while to form a relationship. I don't even know if we're compatible. You know, he's a doctor. Ah, uh, that explains why he's trying to remove her tonsils. OK, 
can you believe this? Ever since the Beatles, I wanted to meet a sexy guy with an English accent. Uh, <laughs> guess they're all at the Hadassah hoedown. <laughs> Meanwhile, you should have come. There were a lot of nice girls there for you. Big hair, lots of makeup, tight clothes. Not my style, but he goes for that type. <laughs> Jules, before I forget, come for dinner Sunday. I'll take the plastic off the couch. That sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Laugh at his jokes. <laughs> This is what they call slightly irregular. Friend. Yeah, honey. Friend, does it show yet? Wait a second. What are you talking about? Just watch out. <laughs> That'll be 16 next week. Oh, oh, honey. Gee, I felt just like my mother when I told her I lost my Virgin Airline tickets. Well, did they give you another one? Oh, no, honey. When you lose that ticket, it's non-refundable. <laughs> Unless you get engaged to Prince Charles, and then it miraculously reappears. <laughs> oh, Maggie, we gotta plan something special for your sweet 16. You know, with my panache and your father's checkbook, we could... We could be two tricks in a row, but that's what we could be. Well, Dad isn't saying anything about my party. Hmm. All he does is pinch my cheek and call me his almost grown-up little girl with this lame grin. Oh. There she is, my almost grown-up little girl. Oh, I can't believe how big you've gotten already. You know, it only seems like yesterday I was putting you on Mr. Potty. Dad, you're making me vomit. Do you remember our favorite game, hmm? Here comes Mr. Snake. Oh, hello. That's funny. That was my ex-boyfriend Danny's favorite game, too. Dad, for Tiffany's Sweet Sixteen, her dad flew all of her friends to South Africa, and he even got Whitney Houston to sing. Okay, if Maggie gets a Sweet Sixteen, I'd like a bar mitzvah. Brighton, you're not Jewish. You know, a sizable donation to Temple Emmanuel could take care of that. <laughs> all right, let's go, Grace. All right, Margaret, how does this sound for your Sweet Sixteen? World famous, exquisitely decorated, visited by royalty. <gasps> Leonard's of Great Neck? Oh, oh, they make a shrimp scampi made out of scrawd. Mwah! It's fine. What royalty would you see at Leonard's of Great Neck? Uh, well, excuse me. At my cousin Meryl's wedding, the ballroom right next door, Prince Machiavelli convention. <laughs> Who looks stupid now? Margaret, I have booked the solarium at the Guggenheim Museum. Gloria Vanderbilt just had a big party there. Bobby Short playing the piano. Yeah, I think I might be able to pull a few strings. Hmm? You like it, Zach Perlman? Hmm? Uh, <laughs> let's just hope he's in town. <laughs> oh, Fran, what are the odds of me dying in my sleep tonight? Not good enough. <laughs> It's gonna be so boring and stuffy. All my friends are gonna hate it. Oh, don't worry, sweetie. No one will come. <laughs> Shh. Who the heck is that at five o'clock in the morning? They'll wake up the whole house. Niles! <laughs> oh, good, you heard me. Van Gogh heard you. <laughs> He's dead and missing an ear. Well, that's attractive. Oh, it's a bite plate. I grind my teeth. <laughs> you know, my cousin Eileen ground her teeth down to the gums. She doesn't smile much anymore, but my cousin Bob has never been happier. <laughs> what? You sleep in your makeup? Honey, do you see a ring on this finger? <laughs> what if there was a fire? Do I need some gorgeous fireman climbing over me to save the 16-year-old heiress? <laughs> Ma, what are you doing here so early? This is how you sleep? Where were your earrings? <laughs> Good girl. Oh, hello, Niles. Good morning. Do I 
smell banana fritters with fresh fruit compote? No. Could I? <laughs> so, as long as I'm here, how did the date with the doctor go? The date was canceled. Oh, well, you're gonna have to get used to that when you're the surgeon's wife. He's a tree surgeon, Ma. <laughs> Meanwhile, you can still make reservations under Dr. and Mrs. Ma. <laughs> I canceled the date. <laughs> Darling, you think I'm gonna hit you? Well, I... You decided not to see a doctor? What are you, sick? The kids needed me. Fran, you're obsessed with these people. When are you gonna get a life of your own? You know, Ma, I wanted to surprise you, but I did meet someone. He's a very successful investment banker worth zillions. Ah! Ah! The only thing is, I had to sign a prenup. Oh. <laughs> you see, Ma, I could kill you if I want. <laughs> now lay off. Fine. Live alone. Have no one to talk to across the dining table. No one to make love with. Believe me, darling, I know what that's like. Ah, oh, you have daddy. Where am I losing you? <laughs> All these credit card companies want to know everything. Married or single? Hate that box. <laughs> Mother's maiden name. Kennedy. <laughs> Miss Fine, wasn't lying on my gold card application enough? Niles, I told you I was just trying to make you sound better. By listing my occupation as Fraser's brother? <laughs> Meanwhile, the guy won the Emmy. They upped your limit. <laughs> Fran. Oh, my God, Val. Something horrible happened? <gasps> oh, God, Fran, I'm so sorry. <gasps> Somebody died? Somebody famous? Danny. Danny Thomas, Danny Kay. <gasps> Danny Bonaducci! Oh, and he was so young. Who would have thought that he would have gone before Reuben Kincaid? <laughs> Fran, I'm talking about Danny Imperiali, your ex fiance Oh, him. Well, when you gotta go, you gotta go. <laughs> he didn't die. He's getting married. No! I'm sure Hillary's caught Al Gore doing the same thing. <laughs> Just let me finish the fantasy. Go ahead. Miss Babcock, you're fired. Because? I'm in love with Miss Fine. Oh, I just love playing this game. <laughs> Where is he anyway? At some boring business dinner? Well, if you must know, and I know you must, he's gone to a party. Get out of here. That's what I told him. Well, you know what this means, don't you? Yes, that he's finally letting go of the past and rejoining the world of the living. No, that his jacuzzi tub is free. <laughs> no, no, no. Forget it, Miss Fine. There's a problem with that tub. Oh, what? It's taken. Oh, no, you don't. No, you don't. Come in, come in. Oh. Oops, I locked the door. And would you look how filthy this key is? I better go wash it in the jacuzzi. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you gonna get it? I can let a phone ring, can you? It might be that fabulous man you were telling your mother about. No, he wouldn't call. Why not? I made him up. <laughs> it could be Visa increasing your limit. Oh. Hello? Sucker. Oh, it's you, Mr. Sheffield. Well, where are you? Oh, he sounds like he's had too much to drink. All right, stay where you are. I'm going to come and get you. I'll get my coat. Don't bother. Goodbye, Miss Fine. <laughs> Hello, Miss Fine. Uh... Woo, someone's 100 proof. Don't light a match. <laughs> Why, so shocked. Your father never came home inebriated? No, we're Jewish. 
came home gaseous. <laughs> Never let a match then, either. If you want my body and you think I'm sexy, come on, sugar, tell me so. OK, Mr. Sheffield, <laughs> calm down. That's not even attractive from Rod Stewart anymore. <laughs> Well, I cannot tell you how excited I am about our little weekend getaway to Boston. <laughs> it's a business trip, Cece. Oh, of course I know that. Work, work, work. In fact, right now I'm off to get a wax. I mean... <laughs> facts. Don't worry, sir. You'll be right near Salem. They know how to take care of her kind there. <laughs> Now, so you don't think Cece wants to go to Boston to, um, you know, shout the British are coming? <laughs> oh, no, sir. No, as a matter of fact, just before you came in, she was saying what a shame it is the children can't go with you. Oh, really? Mm. Well, I suppose it would be educational for them. Oh, but the hotel only has two rooms. Do you think she'd mind sharing with the girls? And how many times have we heard her say, I don't care who I sleep with? I'm never gonna meet anybody. I'm never gonna fulfill my dream of buying double burial plots. That's your dream, Phil? Mm-hmm. That's my dream, too. <gasps> now, once we're best friends. <laughs> Fran, yeah. you think we're being too particular? I mean, maybe, maybe we should lower our standards. Lower our standards? Mm -hmm. Wow, we're already down to mammal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All I want is a nice, cute guy with a couple of bucks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? Have you ever seen Harold and Maud? <laughs> oh, forget it. Once you've seen a guy in his Batman pajamas, it's just no mystery left. Those flowers for your girlfriend? Yeah, actually, they're for my fiance. Oh. She's just so wonderful. Oh. We're getting married in a couple of weeks. Over there. <laughs> Is there something I can do for you? Yes, but we hardly know each other. <laughs> actually, I wanted to order uh, two dozen white tulips to be delivered to my son, Maxwell Sheffield. Oh, sorry, that woman has the last of the tulips. Who? That girl. I had my eye on those. <laughs> well, I had my eye on Antonio Banderas, but I ain't taking him home either. <laughs> uh, darling, uh, what if I bought you some plastic flowers to go with that petroleum product you're wearing? <laughs> Wow, as if the Brits are so stylish. News flash, the royal wedding pictures look like Mama's family. <laughs> These New Yorkers are so pushy. Give me the damn tulips. Hey, my boy sent me out to buy tulips for his mother, and I want the old bat to like me. Give me that. Give me that. Oh, what are we fighting about? You keep it. There's a whole fresh batch right there in the refrigerator. In that case, you keep the wilted ones. Fine. <laughs> Miss Fine, some mail came for you. A mail? Well, who is he? What does he look like? Did you let him get away? Miss Fine, this kind of mail. Oh, well, I know him. Bill. <laughs> look at this, something from Danny. Oh, my ex fiance's baby was born. Yeah. Look at that head of hair. <laughs> oh, my God, it's not his head. Well, at least Danny can be sure it's his. Oh, 
don't know, Alice. You ever think about having a kid of your own? Someone that you could take care of, put to bed at night, rub Vicks on his little chest when he's sick? I already have one. <laughs> Isn't he adorable? <sighs> Miss Fine, are you all right? Oh, yeah. I just thought that by this age I'd have a child of my own, and maybe if I hadn't dumped Danny, this little chia pet could have been mine. <laughs> Miss Fine, you still have plenty of time to have children. Meanwhile, there's an expiration date stamped on my eggs. Best if used before you start looking like your mother. <laughs> you know, he's really not so bad. A lot of women like hairy men. What's his name? Let me see. Uh-oh. Judy. <laughs> Maxwell, I can't believe you won't let me read your first novel. Never been so insulted in my life. You've never been so insulted? Well, now I'm insulted. <laughs> see, see, my writing is very personal to me. I, look, if it makes you feel any better, I can assure you no one has read it, and no one ever will. Here's your book, Mr. Sheffield. <laughs> I got a little slim fast on page nine. It's fine. This manuscript was in a folder marked personal, in a file marked private, hidden in my desk drawer. <laughs> I get you, I get you. You don't want certain people reading it. Miss <laughs> Fine, that included you? You're kidding. Well, if you didn't want anybody reading it, you should have put it in your secret wall safe. You want me to open it up for you? Get out! <laughs> All right, OK, but I'm telling you, this man is gifted. Come back. <laughs> You really think so? Oh, I was so engrossed in it. Now, remember that script you asked me to hand deliver to Mandy Patankin before 12 o'clock or he was going to pass on your new play? <laughs> Didn't do it. <laughs> what? He's getting on a plane for the coast in an hour! Oh, well, do you want me to rush and catch him? Because, you know, I can tell you how great your book is later. Oh, no, 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 sit, sit, sit. <laughs> See, see, you can go. Maxwell? <laughs> Oh, just give me the script. I'll never get to the airport in an hour. That's true, sir. She needs at least two people on her broom to use the express lane. <laughs> so, uh, it was fine, mm. um, you were saying. Well, I just love the lead character. You know, the rich, handsome movie producer, tragically widowed in the prime of his life, <laughs> struggling to raise three children all by himself. Oh, I don't know how you come up with this stuff. <laughs> I just let my imagination run wild. <laughs> and my favorite was the over the hill house boy. Hmm. <laughs> Riot thinks he should be king of the castle. Every time the boss turns his back, he's smoking his cigars and drinking his brandy, mumbling something under his breath. Probably make another million. <laughs> like he needs it. Well, now that they're gone, can we talk about the producer and that sexy, gorgeous governess he's got prancing around in those short skirts? Uh -huh. well, I'll tell you, they've got so much between them. You like that, huh? Oh, baby. And that wedding night after all those years of sexual tension, who, huh? <laughs> Miss Fine, they don't get married. Well, I'm just telling you what the public wants. <laughs> Tilt your head. Can I vacuum in there yet? You know, I think there's more than enough suction going on in that room. Why don't you give them some privacy? Niles, I'm performing a very important function. I'm watching out for her father. <laughs> yeah, the minute Mr. Sheffield comes walking through that front door, I'll just shift right into my nanny shtick. <laughs> Maggie, you're too young, yada yada. Wow, would you look at the way she tilts her head? You know, I taught her that. Oh, gee, Niles, that abdominizer I bought you is really paying off. <clears throat> Not that your body could ever compare with Mr. Sheffield's. You're so handsome and young. What are we doing? 
we ever gonna do with that girl? She's completely out of control. Maybe I should hire another nanny to watch her. Well, you know, that would really free me up a lot. To Miss keep... Fine! <laughs> Look, I'm very concerned about Margaret. She has three weeks of winter vacation coming up, and I don't want her spending the entire time on that couch kissing some boy. Oh, why don't you do what my father did when I entered my makeout years? Mm -hmm. He walked into the den and he spliced into the neighbor's cable. And? <laughs> I don't know. We haven't seen him since. It's fine. Oh, Mr. Sheffield, she's going to be 17. I mean, all she's doing is kissing. It's not as if she's running out of the house to meet some wild drifter who's picking her up on a motorcycle. <laughs> Gotta go, that's my date. possibly hear the person you're talking to with all this racket. Why do you think I called Ma? <laughs> Frankie, Frankie. When are you coming back to practice? Thursday. Call you Thursday, Ma. <laughs> Frankie, go get your stuff. Your dad's going to pick you up any minute. You know, Gracie, if you switched to piano, you'd have so much more in common with Billy Joel's kid. Why would I want to meet Billy Joel's kid? Well, because her father is recently divorced, sensitive, and Jewish. <laughs> Stop always thinking about yourself, miss. I'll put away your violin so it doesn't get broken. You know, Frankie, you really should practice more. Hey, don't tell me what to do when my father puts you in a pair of cement Mary Janes. Oh, I'll get it. Oh, hi. You must be Mr. Tatori. Please. My friends call me. Tony. <laughs> what does your wife call you? I'm divorced. I'm Fran. <laughs> you seem very familiar to me. Where are you from? Flushing. No kidding. Me too. I can't believe it. You hardly have an accent. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, you know, I've been living in Manhattan for two whole years, so I kind of lost it. <laughs> Meanwhile, they said you can never get out of the neighborhood. And look at us, you and your cashmere rover coat, me in my boss's mansion. Hey, Cheech, give me a hug. It'll cost you 10. That's my boy. <laughs> what do you say we arrange another play date? Oh, well, what do you say, Gracie? Do you want Frankie and his dad to come over again? Fran, Frankie broke my Barbie's legs and stuffed her in the trunk of the dream car. <laughs> She'd love to. I was talking about you and me. I will pick you up on Friday. Friday? Wait a minute. We hardly know each other. Better start on Thursday. Take care of that. You're a funny girl. I'm gonna send you some steaks. Cheech, the door. He's sending me beef? Is that guy classy or what? <laughs> I just love her. You know, I've seen her in person. She looks much younger. Fran, the storm is getting worse. How is Santa gonna deliver all the presents? Gracie, the man is bigger than Tom Del Luis and he fits through a chimney. Believe me, he can get through a blizzard. <gasps> Miss Fine, come on! We're gonna miss the premiere. What can she be doing up there? Blow drying, sir. <laughs> Niles, why does it take women an hour to do what a man can do in five seconds? Speak for yourself, sir. <laughs> okay, I'm ready. How do I look? Fine, now let's go. Fine, I need gorgeous. I'm changing. <laughs> Why didn't I say gorgeous? Why? 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 Dad, she's been working here for three years. When are you gonna learn? Okay. Does this make me look fat? No. <laughs> Do you like my hair this way? Yes. <laughs> is my tush wider than usual? There is no answer to that one. So you've got to know how to speak to a woman. Miss Fine, you'll miss the buffet. Daddy, how do I look? Gorgeous. 
<laughs> but do you think the dress makes me look? No. Good? Do you like what I did? Yes. Yeah. yes. <laughs> Great. I just gotta change my purse. No, 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 Miss Fine. No one's gonna see the bloody purse. We will be late. Oh, will you calm down? I know that you always lie to me and tell me things start earlier than they do. Yeah, well, stupidly, this time I told you the truth. Oh, why did you do that? I depend on that extra half hour that's not real. <laughs> oh, children, wait in the car, will you? Tell you what, Miss Fine, I'll send the limo back for you. Thank you. Don't want to keep Alec and Kim waiting. Baldwin and Basinger? Oh, that's right. <laughs> uh, waiting in the limo. I don't believe you. Wanna risk it? <laughs> I can't see her. Oh, yeah, that's her with the blonde hair. That's Maggie. <laughs> Is it? <laughs> oh, you just think you're so smart, don't you? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> oh, are we taking Gracie with us? She's waiting in the limo. Is she? <laughs> Excuse me, you think I'm going to fall for the same trick? Daddy! <laughs> saw Maggie and her new boyfriend smoking cigarettes. Well, I'm just glad she wasn't smoking because they just had, you know. <laughs> She's too young to, you know. <laughs> Believe me, kids nowadays are you knowing before you know it. <laughs> so what are you gonna do, tell Mr. Sheffield? Oh, no, I could never betray Maggie's trust like that. Then she'd start telling on me. <laughs> No, I've got a better idea. I am going to let Mr. Sheffield catch me smoking right in front of Maggie. Oh, Fran, that is a brilliant idea. You don't get it, do you, Val? <laughs> when Maggie sees Mr. Sheffield reaming me out, she's going to be so petrified, she's never going to want to smoke again. Oh, ooh, here they come. <laughs> Oh, boy, does this bring back memories. You miss smoking? <laughs> oh, no. I miss... you knowing. <laughs> you want a cup of... Miss Fine, what the devil are you doing? Oh, my God, Mr. Sheffield! I didn't expect you to come home and catch me. Don't you hate when that happens? <laughs> Have you lost your mind? Oh, I know. Smoking in front of the children? Oh, I know. And I've always known you weren't too bright, but of all the stupid things you've ever done. I... what'd you say? <laughs> you think I'm stupid? Well, I'd love to find some other explanation, but there doesn't seem to be one. Look, there may be somebody stupid in this room, but it sure ain't me. What did I do? Wait, wait, do you know who you are speaking to? Yeah, I'm speaking to the guy that if he doesn't take back what he just said, he's going to be looking for a nanny. I've been looking for one for the last three bloody years. <laughs> I am out of here. And Niles feels the same way, too. Tell him, Niles. Who loves you, baby? <laughs> Fran's okay. She's never been late for breakfast. Oh, I'm sure Miss Fine's all right. It takes time for her to roll out of bed, throw on a robe. Oh, and then there's the slipper dilemma. Fuzzy or formal marabou feather pom-pom? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Miss Fine, why aren't you undressed? <laughs> you know, I've dreamt of you asking me that question. <laughs> Only you guys weren't there. <laughs> But Niles was what that man could do with a feather duster. <laughs> Don't ever let him go. Oh, you guys already started breakfast? Gee, I was going to suggest we all go out to eat. You know, for a change. Well, Miss Fine, I rather prefer to stay at home. Niles is the only one who knows how to make my breakfast just the way I like it. Toast and eggs? Please, Daniel Day-Lewis could make that with his left foot tied behind his back. <laughs> Although, who would want to eat it? <laughs> On. Aren't you sick of the same old routine? Well, I don't have a routine, Miss Fine. Of course you do. I come in here every morning, I sit down, you say I look gorgeous. Well, I don't do that. We'll start. <laughs> oh, oh, just, just one, one piece, piece of toast, toast this morning, morning Niles. <laughs> Think, Think I, I overdid. overdid. 
Did this weekend. weekend. Just what is your problem, Miss Fine? We're in a rut, honey. I mean, Mr. Sheffield. <laughs> Nothing ever changes around here. I mean, it's Monday morning, which means Miss Babcock has just arrived. She's handing Niles her coat. She's saying, careful, I just cleaned my fur. To which he responds, well, don't cough up any hairballs. <laughs> and right about now, she's getting even with him. Oh! <laughs> Miss Babcock is here. doing here? The guys that come to this coffee shop already got girls they picked up at the club. Honey, that's why you and I are shoe-ins. You know what those chicks are gonna look like under these lights? With their big hair and gaudy dresses and overly done makeup? A couple of hookers, that's what. <laughs> Ugh, I'm never gonna meet anybody. I'm such a loser. Val, you're your own worst enemy. And any time now, a guy can come up to you and say hi. Hi. Do you mind? We're talking here. Yeah. Can I get your name and number? Why? Was that your Porsche we hid in the front? What Porsche? Uh, nothing. Uh, uh, are you actually making a move on Val? Uh, yeah. Play hard to get. <laughs> uh, it's a Valentine from Ma. Uh... How do you know? Mm, look, there's a Lee Press on nail stuck in the truffle. <laughs> so, Fran, how come you don't like Valentine's Day? Oh, you know, everybody makes such a big deal about it being the most romantic day of the year. Meanwhile, I think it's very commercialized, and I just don't buy into it. most romantic day of the year. <laughs> oh, what is it with girls and Valentine's Day? They send you those stupid cards, and then they expect you to, like, talk to them and ask them out. Well, I'm not doing it. No one sent you a card? No. <laughs> How about you, Tommy? Well, we're friends and stuff, but I don't think I should be sending him a Valentine. <laughs> Honey, I, I meant, do you have a Valentine? Oh. Well, there is a girl that I sort of like, but I think she might be a little bit out of my league. She is. <laughs> so, friend, who was your date with? Oh, well, remember that really cute guy, Jeff, the cop that I went out with once? Oh, was that the date you had when I was in the third grade or the one you had when I was in the fourth? <laughs> you want to make it to the fifth? <laughs> Oh, this is for you. Your old modeling agency is having a reunion. Oh, look at that. Boy, you know, I don't know how I ever lasted as a model. I mean, every week, piling on all that hair and makeup. <laughs> Squishing into those tight clothes. <laughs> I'll tell you, I don't miss it at all. <laughs> oh, that's my... How do you know? Pie's done. <laughs> Oh, Fran, I'm so upset. I don't even know how I got here. Well, I see some raised pizza sauce, <laughs> some sauerkraut, <laughs> and some sprinkles from Baskin and Robbins. I'd say you took the subway to 59th Street and walked Lexington Avenue. <laughs> Go ahead, make fun. Meanwhile, my life is over. Your father is not attracted to me anymore. I even tried surprising him at the door, naked. <laughs> ah, you didn't. I did. Meanwhile, you will never see another Jehovah's Witness in my building. <laughs> Ma, why don't you just relax? I'm sure it's just a phase. Honey, we haven't had relations in two whole weeks. Two, two weeks? weeks. <laughs> Please, tell it to someone who cares. <laughs> so, I've decided to have some cosmetic surgery. I'm having my arms done. <laughs> Look at this. It's, it's just like tapioca pudding. Ma, that is...
his tapioca pudding. <laughs> Oh, Niles, good. Look, I know it's your day off, but I need you to work. I uh, need you to run this ad copy down to John Kennedy's office for me. John? John? <laughs> you know, it's his day off. Would you stop being such a slave driver? I'll take it to him. And what's more, I'll make sure that John John signs for it personally. Oh, that isn't necessary, Miss Fine. <laughs> oh, yes, it is. <laughs> Who's coming over? Elizabeth Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> Beautifully executed, sir. Oh, thank you. Where's Mr. Kennedy? In Singapore. Oh. <laughs> Think she'll wait for him? <laughs> very good, sir. Very, very good. Boys, boys, boys. <laughs> now, do you think that my mother gave birth to a dummy 25 years ago? <laughs> You two wouldn't let me near George Kennedy, let alone John. <laughs> now, who's coming over here? Well, it doesn't really matter, Miss Fine, because you are not going to meet her, <gasps> him or it. Oh, you know, I cannot believe that you don't trust me. I mean, I sit here cooped up in the house all day long. You never introduce me to any of the stars that you know. You never let me in any of your shows. I have a good mind to go get little Ricky and... <laughs> Daddy Fine. I need you to drop off this script to Antonio Banderas. Forget it, Miss Babcock. I already know who's coming over here this afternoon. Uh, Cece. You told her about Elizabeth Taylor? <gasps> no, you did. <laughs> oh, Elizabeth Taylor. Oh, when I was a little girl, my mother would dress me up like her for Halloween. All that big, dark hair and dramatic makeup tight little dress. Oh, I'll tell you the things you can get away with when you're a kid. I can't believe we're the only two girls in this sports bar and no one's hitting on us. What does a girl gotta do to get noticed in here? Watch this. Oh, that is it. I, you know, I'm giving up on men. I'm giving up. I'm, I'm, I'm very content. I, I have three beautiful children, a gorgeous home, a great guy, so I don't have a sex life. Believe me, I can hold out longer than Lisa Marie. Oh, my God. There's a gorgeous guy cruising us. Well, Val, he's all yours. He's coming this way. Val, I'm telling you, my dating days are over. Hi. I'm Michael Vaux. I play with the New York Rangers. Would you like to go out with me sometime? Yes, I would. How's Friday? Thursday sooner. I need the address. Get a pen. Fran, what happened to living like a nun? I pictured you climbing every mountain, fording every stream. Well, I followed every ranger till I found my dream. Ugh, meanwhile, we're out of popcorn. Oh, let me. Come on! My neck is killing me. Whoever knew a tennis match could be so strenuous. Agassiz Tush, San Francisco Tush. Agassiz Tush, San Francisco Tush. Friend, you've never been to a tournament before? Well, a Mahjong tournament. <laughs> the only thing that gets those Tushes moving is to rip the cellophane off the deli platter. You know, I came here to see some famous athletes. Where's Monica Sella, Shaq, Joe Montana? Right, and just because they own the place doesn't mean they're actually going to be here. Bussing tables. Hi, I'm Monica Sellis. <laughs> Welcome to the All Star Cafe. <clears throat> oh my God, do you know who this is? What am I, an idiot? Honey, can I substitute slaw for beans? <laughs> this is fine. This woman has won every single major tennis tournament in the world. Well, actually, Dad, I don't think she's won Wimbledon. <laughs> you know what? I'll take her beans. <laughs> Miss Salas, I am so embarrassed. I mean, I never expected you to be serving. Oh, serving. <laughs> I'll send your waiter right over. You know, I have always wanted to learn how to play tennis. What happened? Well, it's a very big time commitment, and uh, I was always very career oriented. What happened? <laughs> you know, friend, if you wanted, I could teach you how to play tennis. 
Oh, well, thanks, B, but I kind of have my eye on that cute blonde instructor at the end of the bar. Am I not cute? Am I not blonde? Shut up, Maggie. <laughs> Sweetie, let's put it this way. If things don't work out between me and Gorgeous, I am all yours. I'm all yours. <laughs> Friday night dress to kill, going to temple to pray for a date. <laughs> Ma said they've got a new canter, and he's single and gorgeous. I'm hoping for a religious experience. <laughs> <laughs> Does anyone in your faith ever take a vow of celibacy? Just me. <laughs> <laughs> But I decided that I'm taking Maggie and Gracie with me. I think that it's important that they learn how people of other religions pick up men. <laughs> oh, by the way, the airline called. I'm afraid they can't locate your suitcase. Oh, it doesn't matter. That's why you never put anything important in the baggage that you check. Well, it's automatically insured for $500. But stupid me, how'd I put that $500 watch in there? <laughs> When did you get a $500 watch? Tomorrow. <laughs> well, sorry I can't join you and the girls on your pilgrimage to find single spiritual leaders, but uh, <laughs> Dad and I are going to go see the Potteries play the Mets. All right, see you guys. All right. Well, Brighton and I have to see Pagliacci at the Met. <laughs> oh, isn't it funny how people just hear what they want to hear? Yeah, it's one of the pitfalls of a big house. When did Brad Pitt call the house? <laughs> I'm ready for temple. <laughs> Honey, it's only Friday night services. We're not fleeing Anna Tefka. <laughs> oh, hi, Niall. Mm -hmm. Say, look at this great Mother's Day present I got. 50% off on the red dot sale. Mm. Oh, by the way, here's your magic marker. <laughs> Every light in this entire house is on. Do you people realize how much energy we're wasting here? Oh, would you just sign my report card? <laughs> nice try, Brighton. Oh, B, you failed French. What are you talking about? I got a B. No, you didn't. You turned the F into a B with a red magic marker. <laughs> you know, I am horrified. <laughs> Friend, you've got to promise me you won't tell Dad I failed French. You know what a pain he can be. Your father, the most compassionate, understanding, handsome... He's standing right behind me. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's right, Brighton, and you are getting a tutor. Oh, a tutor? Oh, that's not how you learn a foreign language. you got to go to the country and immerse yourself in the culture. Forget it, Miss Fine. You're not getting a trip to Paris. <laughs> I tried that when I wanted to protect my Swedish meatballs. He sent me to Ikea. <laughs> now, you know, I might not mind a hot-looking French tutor. Some babe in a short skirt, spiked heels, little accent. Oh, come on. You think your father's going to hire a floozy like that to teach his kids? Please. <laughs> You missed some top-of-the-line bar mitzvah. They flew the entire family in. Mm -hmm. From where? The ceiling. <laughs> yeah, it was a giant sequined hot air balloon. It was like being in a Jewish Wizard of Oz. <laughs> oh, and B, the bar mitzvah gave me such great ideas for your confirmation party. And I'm sure they're fantastic. But after church, the whole family's coming back here for an elegant supper. You see, the arrangements have all been made. Quick, now, let's make the arrangements. <laughs> That's right, Maxwell. Less is more. When I was confirmed, we had a very simple ceremony. Mm, lit a few candles and danced around a dead cat. <laughs> Dad, come on. I've been studying with this priest for three years now. I want a bar mitzvah. <laughs> Oh, Mr. Sheffield, you know, he's the middle child. You saw the godfather. You don't want to have another Fredo Corleone on your hands. <laughs> he already resents you for all those after-school activities that you make me schlep him to. Oh, no, that's me. <laughs> Nanny Fine, is this the cruise you and Val are going on? Mm-hmm. Oh, boy, would you just look at that gorgeous hunk of beef over there by the pool? And, you know, the chef will carve it for you right there. <laughs> Don't you find it a little degrading to be a single woman on a cruise? I mean, trapped on a ship with all those marauding men, half-naked, greased up with suntan oil. No way to escape. Good night, Maxwell. 
<laughs> oh, Miss Fine, you're going to have a wonderful time. You know, I remember my first transatlantic crossing. I booked the Royal Suite on the top deck. Oh, magnificent panoramic views. Oh, well, we've got the Jules Verne cabin. We're 20,000 leagues under the sea. <laughs> but I don't care, because my psychic told me that I was going to meet the man of my dreams on this cruise. A psychic, Miss Fine? Mm, yeah, she was fabulous. She said that he and I were going to dance on water. Then she got some kind of freak asthma attack, and it just ate up the rest of my three ninety five a minute. <laughs> Miss Fine, you don't honestly think you're going to meet the love of your life and get married based only on what any stranger tells you over the telephone? Well, you got that right, mister. You know how many clueless quacks I had to call before I found one with that kind of vision? <laughs> Oh, Grandma Yetta called and said she's on her way. I don't know why she wouldn't let me send the limo for her so she could stretch out and back. Oh, honey, at her age, she's not looking to stretch out in the back of any long black cars. <laughs> <laughs> Niles, do you have anything for the dog to eat? Sure. What are you in the mood for? <laughs> Watch it, Hop Singer. I'll have you fixed like I fixed him. Oh. <laughs> Natty Fine, here's my credit card. Now, when you take Chester to the groomer, be very careful. He's been biting and snapping and being particularly vicious. Bercujo, Bercujo. <laughs> Dump him in here. I gave him a tranquilizer. Oh, you know, my mother once took a doggy tranquilizer by accident. She thought it was a Dexatrim. <laughs> what happened? Well, she ate out of a big bowl, licked herself clean. <laughs> Basically, nothing happened. I'm leaving for the airport now, Mother. G goodbye. Yes, of course, Mother. I like you very much, too. I like you very much, too. When are you gonna cut that umbilical cord already? <laughs> no, I have to go to Paris. My brother's done it again. Nigel has taken his entire inheritance and bought some seedy little nightclub in Paris. I told Mother no one in our family should get hold of their trust fund until they're at least 30 years old. 30? Oh, I'm not gonna have a date till I'm 30. <laughs> Well, honey, at least when you turn 30, you'll be rich. When I turn 30, I'll be 40. <laughs> oh, my goodness, look at the time. I'm gonna miss my flight. Oh, well, Shalimar. Oh, no, that's au revoir, Miss Fine. No, I meant Shalimar's in duty free. <laughs> but I'll be happy with whatever you bring me back. Hmm. Chanel. <laughs> oh, Mr. Sheffield, Mr. Sheffield, you forgot your bag. Oh, my goodness, thank you. Goodbye. Bye, Dad. Oh, look who's here. Grandma Yetta. Oh, no, you came here in an ambulance? Are you OK? And she flagged us down and said she was a little out of breath, but as we were driving down your block, she suddenly felt much better. It was a miracle. Oh, thank you. Oh, Brighton, bring Chester over here. We're going to take him to the groomers. Here, boy. Boy. <whistles> you know, friend, I don't want to say anything here, but I think this dog is dead. Oh, calm down. He's not dead. He's just sleeping. I get that all the time. <laughs> oh, sweet doggy, nice puppy. <laughs> wow, she don't feed him enough. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, no. Mr. Sheffield. Mr. Sheffield. <laughs> 